Okay, good evening, Vietnam. Welcome to LZ Bunker. This is Veterans Live Show. My name is Ronnie Embrus. I serve with the 101st Airborne Division of Vietnam in 1967 and 1968. And tonight's episode is all about weapons in the Vietnam War. We will go through pictures, my pictures, some other pictures that were sent in, and have a little bit of a Q&A and discuss some situations about weapons. And if you have a weapon that hasn't been discussed uh, during the course of the thing, you see one, just send a picture in real quick. Okay. We'll speak uh, about that in a few minutes. But first of all, I want to let you know that tonight's episode is brought to you by Fallen Never Forgotten, Vietnam Memorials in the USA, the Vietnam Memorials book, and a tribute to those guys who never made it home. There's one monument from each state, a profile on that monument, and all the troops listed alphabetically that never came home. Go to fallenneverforgotten.com for more information. And right now we're going to the headlines. Okay, Vietnam headlines for the week of February 24th. The wall that heals will make its way to Grundy, Virginia this spring. It will be on display May 6th through May 9th in Poplar Gap Park. So if you're in Grundy, Virginia area, you may want to stop by. For those who don't know, the wall that heals is a three-quarter scale replica of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in D.C. All right, we're going to go now go to the Vietnam timeline segment. All righty, this date in the Vietnam War, we're doing February 24-25. The Tet Offensive ends as U.S. and South Vietnamese troops recapture the ancient capital city of Hue from the communist forces. Although scattered fighting continued across South Vietnam for another week, the Battle for Hue was the last major engagement of the offensive, which saw communist attacks on all South Vietnamese major cities. The number one song for February 24th, 68, was Love is Blue by... Paul Muriat. Okay, let's go to the photo segment. Okay, here we go. From John William Murphy, Korean 9th Rock. You're okay firing the nightly Mad Minute. Tenths of those of the 48th Assault Helicopter Company at Ninhua in 1968. The Mad Minute. I think that was like clear your weapon time. We used to do that uh, up in the LZs once in a while. A platoon would get online or a couple of squads out of a platoon and just let it rip. And in the meantime, anybody out there in the bushes had a problem. Okay, next picture. This is from Frank A. Burr. My, I imagine her name, name is, Laundry Girl, 199th Infantry in Long Bin, 1967. She was a sweet girl. I wonder what happened to her. Well, 50 years later, she's probably a grandma. There you go. Okay. Next picture. Hin Ngo, a fully loaded AR magazine, is among over a dozen exploded munitions uncovered by a demining team in Kilam Village, Jiaolin District in Quang Tri Province. There you go. AR-15, it says on a Colt AR-15. All right. 50 years later. All right. Next picture, please. Okay. Military of the Order of the Purple Heart Chapter. I see all these men running around wearing Vietnam veteran caps. Can't be the same war I was in. They're a bunch of old men. Great. I hope I, I wish I knew who sent that picture. That was a good picture. Thank you. Okay, John William Murphy, still my living hero. My cousin Jim Schaefer was a driver for a general. Date on the side is 1966, December. Did anyone know him? We were so happy that he made it home in one piece. All right, guys, maybe you can blow that picture up somehow and see if, see if you know this guy. Next picture. Okay, here's our Vietnam Vietnam photo. Hold on there, man. Hold that up. Okay, here we go. Thank you. Here we go. Here's some weapons. Some M16 and AK-47. Nice. Yeah, look at that, huh? Okay, what do we got here? We got principal weapons used by ground forces in Vietnam were the M16 American and the Russian AK-47. Both light machine guns were accurate and roughly the same size and weight. 
The M16 fired smaller bullets, allowing soldiers to carry more ammo, but many U.S. troops deemed the AK-47 more reliable because it was less likely to jam when dirty. Interesting. It's true. Yeah. Heard a lot about that. Okay. R.I.P. General McQuaylock, 1942 to 2021. This gentleman took himself and put himself in the position of the POWs every Memorial Day down by the Vietnam Wall. What a true hero, and I wish he got more celebrity for this. Every year they carry him around. He's in this cage, just like the guys did. Remember that movie? Uh, what was that movie? Uh, oh, gee, I forgot that one. Okay, well, it was all about being in those, in those cages. All right, next uh, picture. Oh, that's me. <laughs> that's at Fort Bragg in 1967 with a 3.5, I guess, bazooka. Yeah, looking good, man. Damn. <laughs> there you go. Where do you dig that one up, Matt? Next picture. Okay, here's an ammunition. Here's a little Willie Peter in a little. We found this on the trail in Coochie area. Uh, had a few punji steaks on the side of it there. And, uh, yeah, I'm glad uh, nobody uh, stepped on that one. Okay. Next picture. Uh, here's some piece of our of equipment, both offensive and defensive. A little APC that got blown off the road. I guess a mine hit it, but gee whiz. Hope the guys are okay. Next picture. All right, here's another part of cleaning those weapons there, this mad minute thing. That Sergeant Guy in front. This is a B Company, 1st of the 502nd Infantry, 101st Airborne Division. And there's Lieutenant Ben standing up with his M16 pointed up straight up. He was a KIA. And Larry West in front there with the M60. We'll probably see him in a minute. And uh, Sergeant Guy there right in front with the M16. We get two, two or three squads out of our platoon up there at a time just cleaning our weapons. Next picture. Okay. And about this, the fleet lashes out. The good old 16-inch guns. My goodness, you could hear those things coming miles away. And they'd whistle over your head and ba-doom. And the craters they produced, it was great because they gave us like little swimming pools or <laughs> little baths that we could wash in. Next, uh, they were probably 30, 40 feet across and 15, 20 feet deep, some of them. Okay, next picture. Here you go. This is on Highway 1. In February of 68, uh, we were walking down the road and some guys came by with their little Jeeps and trucks and stuff and uh, got the M60 mounted on a Jeep. What's that, an M1A1? No, that's a tank, M1A1. I don't know. What, what, kind of, what do they call those Jeeps, guys? All right, next picture. Oh, here's a 155. Great. Well, I don't know. I'm not a great picture, but I guess it is. Great timing with that. Breach is like the thing is slanked back, ready to fire that shell. That's crazy. All right, and there's a 155. That's it, 155 millimeter. Next. Oh, that's me yeah, with a couple of hand grenades, a couple of extra magazines, M16. Got the pockets full down the bottom there, the pockets full of whatever, food and candy, and uh, got the gas, gas mask on the over the left hip under the M16 and got the sock full of sea ration cans under the right hand. And there you go. Another warm day in Vietnam with a T-shirt, jungle sweater, fatigue shirt, and a field jacket to keep warm. Yeah. Wasn't that hot in Vietnam all the time. There you go. That's me, your, yours personally here, right here with the M with the AKS carbine. It's right up there behind me on the wall in my, in my on my altar. There you go. There you go. See it up there? Okay. Uh, next picture. Nice to bring a war trophy home. This is that Kuchi. Another nice weapon that we had. The Ma 50, 50 caliber. Uh, we all take a few little turns at this. Uh, got the M16 laying on the side there. Uh, this is at the perimeter in a bunker. Bunkers were laid out every, what, 30, 30 meters or so. And I had an M50 and a 50 caliber on the top of each one of them. That's a coochie. Next picture. Okay. 
There you go. There's a bunch of Marines up there in Quang Tree Province on Highway 1 somewhere. Uh, what is that, a 155 or a 175? Uh, could somebody square me away with that? I wasn't into mechanized artillery. Uh, man, you could carry a whole platoon on there. Nice weapons. Thanks for the support, guys. All right, next picture. Punji Pits with the Willy Peter. There you go. There's another picture. Maybe I had the two pictures. This was down at Coochie again in the dry season. This must have been January of uh, 68 when we were there. There you go, though. Covered up with little branches and stuff. You can't see it. You're walking down a trail. Ba-doom. You uh, hit the punji pit. You move your foot around. You knock the pin off the grenade. And big trouble. Okay, next. A uh, piece of shrapnel. Some uh, F-4 Phantoms came in. And some artillery fire had the uh, our backs in outside of Coochie. That was our first mission. They... Uh, John Stillman, you remember that one, John? And Wayne Duggar, there you go. Harry Adams, first patrol in Vietnam. That's a piece of, uh, I think it's a 155 shell. And I picked it up. It was kind of hot. So I had to wait till uh, I picked it up again to take a picture of it. Okay, next. Oh, the old M79. There you go. That's pretty, uh, I didn't like it. I got to sign that thing one time. And uh, I like the 45 that went with it. But in a firefight, that's one thing I did not want to have. I mean, it'd be great to take out a bunker or something, but uh, I prefer the M16 any day, any time. Any comments on that, guys? Any any opinions? Next one. Next picture. Okay, Gary Schaefe, Schaefe. All right, I just want to thank you and everybody for your service. My question is, what was the popular song? What was the popular song you heard while in Vietnam? The Letter by the Box Tops. Come on. Yeah. Give me a ticket for an airplane. Remember that one? Okay, that's all I sing is one verse, one, one uh, sentence. <laughs> and there's a couple bunch of them, but we got to get out of this place by the animals. Uh, what else was there? Uh, the letter, uh, I can't think of it right now. Nice question, thank you. Did I ever use a law? I broke the law. I'm only kidding there, but no, ever used a law? No, never did, but some of the guys did. Carried one for a while, but never used one. Next question. For, uh, jet fighter support, very good. Yep, we had some great support, not only by fighter jets, but by jets, but by prop planes. The old uh, Vietnamese had a lot of these things that look like uh, P-51 Mustangs, propeller plane. Uh, for close support, uh, the F-4 was our biggest uh, one, and that's about it. Uh, yeah, F-4, and the, and they, they dropped a lot of napalm for us on the tree lines in the hedgerows uh, on the edge of the villages to clear that out. Uh, and uh, B-52s, well, they're not, obviously not jets, but fighter jet support was pretty good, pretty, pretty handy at times, and uh, it opened up the... Uh, perimeter of a defense for us to, to get through there and get into that village. Okay. Backblast area all clear. Oh, yeah, that sounded like the old uh, 3.5 bazooka thing. <laughs> yeah, very good. No, Rodriguez. I like that question. Very good. They also had one mounted on a uh, Jeep, the 105 uh, caliber, kind of looked like a bazooka. All right, what have we got here? What was that question about the 45? Uh, no, because I held that uh, uh, I held that in let me see probably only two weeks but I got rid of it. I gave it to the new, one of the new guys that came in. Uh, 45 didn't use it. Again, in combat, you want an M16, man. You just want all the firepower as much as you can, as fast as you can to clear that area instead of pop, 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 little 45 or a, I'm not going to make the sound of it, of M79, but thank you for that question. Next question. Is that it, Matt? Okay. Probably try to upload a few more. 
Anybody else have any questions about any weapons out there? The M60 was great. A lot of ammo bearers. A lot of guys had to carry ammo in cans and on their, around, slung around their necks. The M60, the M14, we never went in with the M14. A lot of guys went over with the M14, and they liked that weapon a lot, a lot more reliable than the M16 was. And uh, I have no idea what the M4 does today, but they say that's a pretty good weapon. Uh, I guess the Army keeps building better and better weapons, hopefully. And... Uh, what else we had there? Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, mortars, the 81 mortars that we had. Uh, we, I had one guy, he was dropping amp rounds on the trail. He was a leg, came in from uh, Colorado, from a place called, uh, uh, I'm not going to say that. Okay. But I had to tell him, if I see you drop one more round on the trail, there's going to be a problem. He actually didn't want to carry the ammo. And it, <laughs> You gotta be kidding me! Uh, but after a couple of guys talked to him, uh, it certainly uh, got the message through. Willie Watkins, thank you for that question. Who are I, who was I with in the country? I was with B Company, First Battalion, Five Hundred Second Infantry, Hundred First Airborne Division. We flew into Coochie in December 12, 13, 1967. Stayed there about a month, and then flew up to Fubai and trucked into places in and around Dong Ha and Quang Tri City. I imagine they had an idea that Tet was coming, so they sent the 2nd and 3rd Brigade of our division over in early or mid December, just in time to be like a month or so away, get some in country training, and to uh, get ready for the Tet Offensive. Thank you, Willie. Gary Chafee again. Yeah, they, uh, the M79, did they call that the thumper? Yes, it did, because when it it shot off, it went. that's what it did. Boom, boom, boom. Like, it was kind of, you knew, they knew where you were once you fired it, too, which wasn't too good. So, I mean, big time sound. All right. I mean, if somebody fired up one round of M16 or two rounds, they're not going to, they can look up, the, up and down a tree line. They're not going to know where it was, but that, that sound... Gave you gave you position away pretty pretty easily. Next question. Any kind of weapons questions? Do, do, do. Okay. Guess not. All right, Matt. What do you want to do now? You want to take it away? Do, do, do. We made it. Okay, let's wrap it up. Okay, well, thank you so much for uh, watching the show tonight. Don't forget, this was brought to you by Fall Never Forgotten, Vietnam Memorials in the USA. Don't forget to tune in next week and uh, see you on the next show. Whatever. And if you want to be on the show, just write in. Tell us who you were with, when you served, where you served, what your MOS was, and we'd be glad to talk to you. Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Not a problem. We'd like to get these Vietnam guys get in some get into the mix. It helps us all deal with our emotions. And uh, we certainly need some guests with unique stories. So, you know, uh, I don't know. Were you a cook? We needed cooks out there. We used to get a hot meal once in a while. Uh, other than that, uh, let's see. Pictures, anytime you want. Send your pictures uh, along with any paperwork you might have. We could always put that up on, on, a, on, on, a, on a screenshot. Send your bio to ruairborne at gmail.com. That's ruairborne at gmail.com. It's right at the bottom of the page there. You can look at our website. That's one of the websites we have. We have the Fall Never Forgotten website. And, of course, the Vietnam Veterans Photo Club website. You can always just send your photo, photos in there and put them online as well as getting them on show. And I do want to send out a couple of more of these Orange Heart Memorials. A buddy from down here in Tennessee, Ken Gamble, came by and talked about the Agent Orange deal that's still going on with the troops and the veterans for 50 years. And some of their down, 
down the line relatives, second generation kind of thing. So, so if you want one of these uh, on our chart memorials, uh, stickers or decals, just and we have pins as well. Where's the pin? Uh, here you go. Uh, nope, I don't have any pins now. But uh, we have pins, nice lapel pins that go on there too. So don't forget to uh, send your pictures in. And also, uh, we're going to send some books out to Vietnam guys in hospitals around the country. So if you free of charge. So if you know anyone who is in the uh, hospital, hospital. Let us let us know, and when you'll send them, we're going to send them a copy of our book, Fall and Never Forgotten: Vietnam Memorials in the USA." Okay, so we got to take care of our vets, especially the ones that are disabled or alone. They don't want to be alone this time, especially this time. And also comment below this video if you liked it, orange chart sticker or patch. Okay, so anytime you're ready. We could take this away to a different place, different time. See you all next week. Any questions, send them in anytime. Any pictures, send them in anytime. Thank you very much for watching, and God bless you, and welcome home.